All right, look, this isn't gonna be as fact-filled as my usual videos like ScoMo, the Michael West interview, Toto's car review. I'm sick of everyone saying that wasn't actually a Porsche. Why would there be so many likes if it was fake? The reason we can't give any concrete stats is because this is an ongoing legislative battle, and so it's all ifs, buts, and maybes at this point. However, if this passes, then my butt is being handed to me on a platter. Maybe. As you've probably heard from Economics Explained or the Butts Man, still at work chaps, good on you for being more on top of Australian politics than me, whose job it is to be on top of Australian politics. Big fan of the real life Sim City shots, by the way, Economics Explained. If the news media bargaining code is passed, it will bring upon ye two terrifying plagues. One, force Google and Facebook to pay for media that they flog for free, which I mean, how are they supposed to afford that with all the tax they dodge? And two, because social media companies can change their algorithm on a dime, News Corp and Nine Fairfax whine that it's impossible for them to plan their businesses around it. Which, guys, welcome to the party. What do you want? Special insights into their algorithm that only you can see and... Holy shit, they actually do! And the Libs are gonna give it to them! Isn't it incredible the power the Australian government can unleash if it so desires? Mass multinational tax evasion? But what can I do? I'm only one man. Meanwhile, when Murdoch has even the slightest complaint. That's it. It's time to take on the biggest companies on Earth who are picking on also one of the biggest companies on Earth. I'm telling you, it's a Goliath versus Goliath battle. Talk about fixing a cockfight to make one a roundhead and the other a red rooster roll. If News Corp and Nine Fairfax get those insights, they will know exactly what the algorithm wants at every moment. Serving YouTube up some genetically modified clickbait while all us independent newsmakers play Marco Polo with it, wondering, uh, okay, uh... How am I going to link massive military expenditure increases with Jake Paul? As such, we will fall further and further down the recommended videos tab while Murdoch and his cronies go up and up to the point that News Corp and Fairfax will have such an unchallenged clinch hold on the platform that it'll be like the noughties all over again. Murdoch in Senate hearing saying, No, no, uh, we don't have a complete monopoly on information. There is the Green Left Weekly that now circulates in Marrickville and Erskineville. Uh -huh. And are uh, you formulating a takeover strategy as we speak? Yes. I'm so sick of people saying the West is better than dictatorships because we have free speech. It's like advertising that a car can go 300 k's an hour. So? You never get to use it unless you want to guest star on Highway Patrol. You might be allowed to voice your opinion on paper, but if a Geordie yells into a camera and no audience is around to hear it, did it really happen? I suppose you just have to ask anyone in the western suburbs that. Uh, yeah, bros, I know friendly Jodies. Is he the uh, Asian guy in Superwog? I know this is the classic YouTubers whining about the algorithm video, but it just feels nice to vent. I always wondered how the global propaganda model would adapt to the modern age, but now I know by whining to the liberals. Oldie bit of goodie. You gotta be proud that it started in Australia. Just like the electric drill, plastic notes, the land down under. Now improving corporations clench hold on the tools of communication. Only two words to describe that. F yeah. C I am morbidly curious about it passing. I just want to see what a prison planet actually looks like. I bet a lot more people will be wearing do-rags. Yo, Holmes. Heard you were disrespecting me on the block, so I'm going to have to <laughs> cut your nuts off and shove them into a pack of knobbies and make you eat it. A player has to protect his block cred. It is sad though that for the first time in a hundred years a platform was being built that could at least drill the odd hole through the defensive wall the media builds around the Liberals' dangerous incompetence and blatant corruption. For example, Michael West wrote the other day an article that if there was any justice in the world would still be top story today, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Barnaby Joyce did in fact overvalue water by twofold, deliberately, as a sort of avaricious and perverse welfare for his mates in agribusiness. Hard to understate the enormity of that. If there was anything remotely resembling a free press in this country, Barnaby would be currently wearing a do-rag. What the f***? How am I supposed to start up a third family in the slammer? Libs, it's okay. You can still get away with morally abhorrent rorts, unimaginable environmental destruction and intergenerational crime thanks to the press. You're as safe as a fetus in Texas as the laws are currently written. I wish there was a record of your corruption, not even to remove you from power. 
Just so future generations might know that, hey, you know why the Darling no longer exists? You know how you read in the history books that it was because of drought? Well, it's actually because of this A level playing field on social media would have at least given us an accurate record for the history books. But I've got to say, I'm not particularly surprised that it's getting taken away. I am sorry that I missed the Our YouTube push. Thank you, Economics Explained, for getting that going. But I am in no way too late to rub it in. Hashtag just saying, while I still can, if Labor was in power, not only would we have a water bomber fleet, an Aussie Tesla, COVID numbers like New Zealand, but we also might have even known about it. With the likes of Michael West and Independent Australia, a counter-narrative was forming to rival the billionaire brainwashing network. And if you think Kevin Rudd, Scourge of Murdoch, would be pandering to his mortal enemy if he was still PM, in fact, why don't we just ask him what he thinks? G'day folks. K Rudd here. I've been thinking a bit about this proposed new Australian uh, news media bargaining code. Now, I always get a little bit suspicious when the Murdoch media get really excited about something and they're really excited about this code. I get doubly suspicious when Scotty from Marketing produces legislation to make the Murdoch media feel really happy. So I'm no fan of um, Google and Facebook particularly, um, and I don't believe anyone's content should be nicked. But the bottom line is this, we've got to ask ourselves what's actually going on here. And what concerns me most as someone who's been in the political process a bit is, what's the public policy objective here? I would have thought it is something old fashioned called media diversity. Now, I know the mob down at the ACCC, the Australian Consumer and Competition Commission, the ACCC, have done a report on this. Fair enough. But frankly, when it comes to media diversity, I haven't been all that impressed with what the ACCC have already done. Remember, the ACCC approved Nine's purchase of the Sydney Morning Herald, The Age and the Australian Financial Review, what used to be called Fairfax. And this is the same Nine Media mob that then hosted a fundraiser for Morrison and the Liberal Party just after the last election. And their chairman is Peter Costello. So, so much for media diversity with that one. Then, of course, we have the earlier ACCC decision, which is to authorise Murdoch to purchase Australian provincial newspapers. That's the mob who have owned and run uh, regional newspapers right across Australia, particularly where I come from, up here in the People's Republic of Queensland. So what happened was virtually every paper in Queensland ends up in Murdoch's control, 13 of the 14 papers. Not much for media diversity there as well. So pardon me, a triple C, if I just get a bit sceptical about what happens with this proposal as well. I'm not the only one with a bit of scepticism here. I noticed that uh, the union representing working journalists, the MEAA, has raised some concerns as well. And I'm kind of with them on two big doubts. Doubt number one. If Murdoch and the others are able to charge uh, Google and Facebook for content, what happens to the money? Does all that money just go neatly into Rupert's pocket? Well, what about regional newspapers, local newspapers? What about public interest journalism? In other words, the stuff that actually keeps media diversity alive. Don't know the answer to that, but frankly, you look carefully at the legislation, it's just not clear at all. Problem number two, it's called the ABC. Now the ABC, in my view, has been drifting slowly to the right for quite a long period of time as they try and suck up to the current government to preserve their funding base. But guess what? With this new news media bargaining code, the ABC doesn't get permission to charge for its content with Google or Facebook. So what happens? No money for the national broadcaster. So not only does Scotty from marketing cut the ABC's budget, not only does the ABC have to grovel to the government and therefore turn its agenda increasingly to the right to protect its remaining budget, it doesn't get to extract new funding 
from either Google or Facebook. So what does that do for media diversity? Bugger all, in my view. So the ABC, regional papers, local papers, and the question of public interest journalism. So folks, when we look at Scotty from Marketing's new law and Uncle Rupert getting really excited about it, I've got to say, I get really, really worried. And if it's good enough for the ACCC to conduct an inquiry into Google and Facebook, how about the ACCC conducting an inquiry into the Murdoch media themselves and the extent to which they have become a genuine cancer on our democracy? And if they won't do it, it's time for a Royal Commission. Everyone go follow King Kev's Twitter. All he does is sit there and dismember Murdoch propaganda and basically boss little haikus. Now that he has that sporting new beard that even Malcolm Turnbull has to pay, he really does look like the Nordic gamer meme embodied. MVP of keeping you up to date with exactly what the media machine's latest move is and deconstructing it in real time. So make sure you follow him before the great blackout of 2020. Hashtag just saying. Like the video. Please share and comment below. Command.